What's up gamers? How you doing? This video I'll be reviewing the new Steam Deck handheld. I know I'm a little late to the party when it comes to reviews on this unit. I pre-ordered it, long story short, I pre-ordered it back in the day uh, on, on Steam when it first was announced. And Steam sent out an email, I think back in August of this year, saying your Steam Deck is ready and I missed that email. And so my, my pre-order was canceled. I was kind of upset about it. But good news, as of October of this year, 2022, uh, Steam Deck is now readily available for the most part, right, in the markets. I believe it's North America, Europe. Uh, I don't think it's available in, in Asia quite yet as of filming this. But really cool handheld. This is the top tier, by the way. There's three different models. The lower lowest model is 399 US dollars, so about 400 bucks. And pretty expensive at 64 gigs of internal eMMC storage. The middle tier retails for 529 US dollars. It has 252 gigs of SSD storage so it's much faster storage uh and and then the top tier here has 512 gigs of internal storage retails for 650 us dollars now the middle tier and the top tier both come with carrying cases because i got the top tier it has the, what they call an exclusive carrying case which is looks a little bit different but overall it's still a carrying case um, also uh it comes with an exclusive like keyboard design digital one which i'll show you here in a second in this video uh has what I really like to has is the etched glass screen, seven inch screen uh, and the glare free. So there's not really much glare on the top tier model, which is nice. The memory is expandable. There is a, a micro SD card slot here. You can hook up a, an external storage device as well. It does not come with a Steam Deck dock. That's really fun to say, but Steam Deck dock, that actually is $90 US dollars. That's actually gonna be additional. I do not have that. Now one design I do like that Valve did with this is the power supplies on the top. It has a USB-C power supply, which is nice. Uh, and when it plugs in the deck, it goes to the top. You do need, it has Bluetooth, so you do need to have an external controller or some type to play the games. And it basically works like a Switch where you can dock it and, and play on TV. I do like Nintendo Switch, and a lot of people have been comparing this to the Switch because Nintendo has been dominating the handheld market for generations, for decades, right? And it's, it's just been dominant. Um, and the here's the OLED. This is the OLED Switch here. Retails for 350 US dollars. The screen sizes are the same. They're both seven inches. This, the Steam Deck is about a pound and a half as far as weight goes. With Joy-Cons, this is about a pound. So it's about a half pound lighter. Uh, the OLED screen, I will be honest, looks much better, more crisp. The darker, darker darks, brighter colors overall than the Steam Deck. Battery life on this thing when you're playing, the claim can last up to eight hours. I've not experienced that. I'm, I'm more experiencing closer to three to four hours of gameplay on the battery charge. It takes about an hour and a half or two to really get to a full charge once it's plugged in. So it's got a pretty quick uh, charge once it is plugged in. Uh, let's take a closer look at the handheld itself. I'll show you some gameplay. Uh, we'll go ahead and go from there. And thanks for watching. Okay, I want to share the show you a closer look at the size comparison between the OLED switch, which is your typical switch, and uh, the Steam Deck. As you can see, it's considerably bigger, same size screen as I mentioned before, both seven inches. I do prefer the Switch screen because it's got the OLED. Definitely a lot more clears, as I mentioned. But uh, let's go show you the button layout for this. Oh, before I do that, I do want to share with you the case that it came with. It comes with a nice case. Kind of reminds me of the larger Switch cases you typically see, which, which is nice. Uh, and got the zipper, open it up. It does have a nice cloth to wipe down the screen, which is cool because you did get some, you know, smudges or whatever on the screen. It has kind of a holder here, and I was kind of curious what this was. I wasn't sure. And actually, I thought it was a sunglasses like holder, but it looks like that. But it's actually to hold the power supply, which is nice. You can take the power supply uh, with you on the go. This thing, it does not detach, so you can't, uh, which is kind of disappointing. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the button layout for the Steam Deck. You have the two touch pads here, which is nice, kind of like a portable mouse. It does have a nice feel to it. You have your options button, steam button. Uh, this is kind of your menu, you know, kind of your start button here as well. Your A, B, X, Y, your two analog sticks, your D-pad. D-pad kind of feels small for the most part. Your two speakers, right and left speakers, got nice stereo sound. Here's where your micro SD would plug into for external storage expansion uh, on the back. You have these buttons here. You have your R4, R5, and your L4, L5 buttons, which is nice. It does get kind of warm when you play with it for a while. It does get warm. It doesn't get hot, but it does get warm, noticeably warm. Uh, you have your power button here. You have your R1, R2 buttons here, and your L1, L2 buttons here. So when you're playing with it, 
it does feel nice. You can see it's, it's kind of smudgy, the screen. <laughs> um, power button here to turn it on. It's in sleep mode, so I'll just tap it once and it turns on automatically, which is nice. I have it displayed, the, the battery life there on top right. Uh, of course, the local time, and this is automatically connected to my Steam account, right? Uh, you can play games outside of Steam through cloud gaming. Uh, if you hit the Steam button here and go to power, and go to switch to desktop. It does take you kind of to a Linux based, almost like a Windows based uh, desktop, which reminds me of Windows. And you can go to Steam, you can go to return to what they call the gaming mode, which is what it was in before. You can have Edge, so I will show in a future video, you can play Xbox games through the cloud, through Edge, which is really cool. Stadia is available, uh, GeForce Now, for example, you can play as well through cloud gaming. So, but you need to have an internet, inter internet connection. There is no, mobile service it's not like uh, ipad where you you know you have like cellular service you need to have some type of wi-fi connection to play those games a pretty a solid one at that so let's go and uh, there'll be a future video though and show you cloud gaming let's go and click on this again we'll load back thing is really quick what i do like a lot and appreciate is steam and valve they know this is kind of open source, right? So they don't have any issues. I mean, you can play emulation. You can have emulations on here, uh, game, other games on here as well. So you can really use it as like a portable uh, PC, which is awesome. And this is one of the most advances, advanced portable handhelds to really to hit the market. Um, so this is Steam. So we'll go to Steam. I'll show you. You can go to your game library. So I'll show you that. Uh, I have 154 games available. Now, as of doing this video, there are 6,000 games in the Steam uh, store that they consider quote verified over 6,000 games meaning they will work are compatible with a Steam Deck Not every game on Steam and there's tens of thousands of games right all together Not every game is going to be compatible with the Steam Deck right uh, VR for example Games are not going to be compatible. If it's a mouse and keyboard style game. It may not be compatible to the Steam Deck But uh, they definitely can go through uh, verification process. So I have 154 games total in my library I have 16 installed um, even though this is over 500 gigs of internal storage, uh, games I have can take up a lot of storage space, right? So for example, I have, um, like Elden Rings I just bought, there was an autumn sale, so I just purchased that. I've heard really good things about it, I haven't played it yet. Uh, NBA 2K23, it's 123 gigs by itself, right? So that eats up, and some of the storage memory and stuff takes up some space. So right there, it takes up a good 25% of my overall storage space, just that one game, right? But I just purchased Sonic Frontiers, which I've been really enjoying as well. Um, so let's take out, let's take a closer look at some of the games play. Let's take a look at, uh, let's do Sonic Frontiers. Hit A, we'll go play. Um, we'll do that. You can play games offline uh, if games are be able to, well, let me take that back. So most games that are available, if you download the game, you can for the most part play the game when it's offline, unless the game requires to be online to play, if that makes sense, right? Um, most games you can play offline. Sometimes the text is really small, so it's kind of hard to play some games. So here, you can kind of see some gameplay briefly. I literally just got this the other day, so I'm like 15, 20 minutes into it. But I really enjoy the gameplay so far and the style. Really no issues with lag or anything like that, which is nice. I'll hit the Steam button here. I'm gonna ex make sure you exit game, because then if you wanna launch another game, you gotta make sure you exit the game first, so I'll do that. Okay, I exit out of Sonic, and now I'm gonna show you how to do uh, remote play, uh, which is cool. So what remote play is, for those who may not be aware, is kind of Steam Link. Basically, you need a PC or laptop computer to be signed into your own account on the same network, Wi-Fi network as your Steam Deck, and you'll be able to play remotely those games on your Steam Deck. Conversely, you can use the Steam Deck as a controller to play remote play as well on your PC, which is also a nice benefit. And what's the benefit of playing remotely? You don't have to download the game onto two devices. You can save, because it's more limited on the handheld, you can divide the, the more uh, detailed games that take up a lot more memory on your PC. But one game, game I'm gonna show you is seventh, The Seventh Guest. Uh, you can see there's a logo there. If you go back, you can kind of see the logo there. It shows it's available for remote play. I can install it, click drop down. I can connect to my PC and I can go steam it, stream it. Okay, we'll go do that. This game came out in the 90s. It's a point, kind of a point and click game. 
adventure game, Gimme Nightmares, when I first played it. We'll go to uh, continue. We'll do a new game. Now I can use the touchpad for a mouse. You can see that. The words are kind of small because the screen's kind of tiny. But this is one of the early games that use a video. Uh, in games, kind of when it was a big deal, the CD-ROM game for the PC. Okay, we'll exit out of this. Um, let's show you some other games on here. Actually, let me show you some settings. Hit the Steam. You can either hit the Steam Deck button here, or there's another button here, menu button at the bottom. Either way, it works the same. Uh, you have settings. Uh, show you. I can do the battery percentage or not. Uh, English language, time zone, etc. What you're in. Uh, controller, keyboard. Um, I'll show you the special one. This is the one that it's exclusive to the upscale one, which is kind of cool. The other ones kind of look more, more, uh, more standard. Right, that's uh, candy coated, night shift. That's kind of cool. Default theme. That's the default one, pretty plain Jane, but um, with steam green. That's pretty cool. And then There's a profile, also exclusive profile for the top tier. I'm not quite sure. I couldn't really quite figure out how to do that. And from what I've seen, it's not nothing too crazy special. I think the biggest difference is the storage, which you can expand upon, not a huge deal, but the anti-glare screen, which is also a plus. But if I were to recommend one of the three models, I probably would have gotten the middle mid-tier model and just upgraded the internal storage. Probably cheaper to do that way. Um, because the 64 gig internal for the, the base model for $400, it's a lot of money to spend. And you can't really put many games on it, right? Unless you have experimental memory. And um, it just, I mean, it is up to you as far as what model you prefer, but that's my recommendation would be this one or the middle tier. All right, um, let's go back. Uh, you can also see storage. Like I've already almost used up on my storage. I have, you know, 135 gigs free, but these are the games I have on it so far. Okay. Uh, let's go back. Let's go to library. I can go to, uh, let's go to games installed. Let's do, ooh, this Disney collection was great. DuckTales, new one's fun. I just also downloaded, this was on sale. Got this yesterday as well. So there's, even though this is like, quote, a glare free screen, I do see a minor glare as you can see from the light above me, but it's not like it's etched, so it's not gonna be as bright. Okay, here's the gameplay. It's kind of dark, but it's part of the dark. It's part of the game. It's dark. I couldn't tell you the frame rate, but definitely looks good, and it's definitely a game that uh, you probably wouldn't be able to play on the Switch, for example, right? This must be a ruin of the metal world. What are the old places? Yeah, looks good. Okay, go ahead and uh, exit on that. Show some other things real quick. You can do. Um, can play, even though the games aren't quote verified. I can show you that there are games that you can still play. Like here's a game that my team and I made, City Hunter: The Curse of the Mayan. I'm gonna show you how it plays on here, and it plays plays great. It's a kind of an adventure game. It's it's a platformer. It's like Mega Man meets Castlevania is the best way to explain it. A lot of fun. We enjoyed being in that game for sure. Definitely, obviously a little biased, but definitely recommend you guys check it out if you can. Um, yeah, I mean, from, for the most part, what do I think about the Steam Deck? I think it definitely can do a lot of really cool things. I think this is just really the only the beginning. I wish the battery life was better. The price tag is expensive for sure. Especially you have, is it worth getting the Steam Deck at the end of the day if you already have a PC with Steam on it? If you do a lot of traveling like I do, I do a lot of traveling for my day job, I'm gonna be able to take games more on the go that I wouldn't be able to do before. So that's the reason I got the Steam Deck now. If you don't, if you're on the go a lot, you're probably better off just playing Steam on a normal PC, to be honest with you. But uh, still a really cool could item. Is it gonna give Nintendo its run for its money for the Switch? Probably not. I mean, the Nintendo is just such a powerhouse, such many great games, Smash Brothers, etc. I just don't think that are really there yet for the Switch or for the Steam rather. Um, thank you for watching, guys. Let me know what you guys think. I'll put the specs 
here on the screen as well for those who are curious what the specs of the Steam Deck is. I didn't mention that before. I apologize. Uh, thank you for subscribing, guys. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys have any games you guys recommend that I get for the Steam Deck, let me know. Uh, we'll see you guys soon. Take care and game on.